Hello everyone. Today we'll discuss the topic of tradition. And what does the Bible say about tradition? What it actually says about tradition as opposed to what people mostly think that it says. So some people have this idea that tradition is all negative in the New Testament. That after Jesus came, he was sort of like a hippie rejecting tradition and only going with the new things, whatever new that can come up with. And that is the ideology of the, um, the modern world, that whatever new is good and whatever is old is outmoded, not necessary and to be just rejected. But is that, is that modern ideology uh, what we encounter in the Bible? We need to look at it properly to understand these things. So, I just typed up this word tradition in this English KJV Bible and all these uh, results showed up. So, mostly when you look at the uh, Gospels, you see a trend that tradition, wherever Jesus is actually speaking about tradition, it's in the negative context, in the sense that the the Pharisees asked Jesus and his disciples, why are you not uh, uh, following the tradition of the elders? And Jesus replies to them and says, why are you transgressing the commandment of God by your tradition? So in this context, we get to know that Jesus is, uh, speaks out a lot against tradition and he speaks out against it. But does that mean that all tradition is bad, that tradition is like a really bad word. I don't think so, because when you look at words like uh, Second Thessalonians 3, 6, here we see a different uh, sort of picture about the word tradition. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourself from every brother that walketh disorderly and not after the tradition which he received from us. So this verse actually shows that um, the apostles had a tradition that they, uh, that believers on, in, on their day received a tradition from their apostles. And they had a tradition to give. So this is seen as a, uh, a positive thing. In the sense that wherever Jesus is actually criticizing tradition, it is the tradition of the elders, the tradition of man, okay, the tradition of men. But here, this tradition is something else. So before going into all of that, let's look at what this word is in the original Greek. So let us, let us go to Thessalonians. Here we have the Strong's number. So Thessalonians. Tradition. So when we click on this, we get the Greek word which is translated as tradition. So here it is, paradosis, paradosis. So what does it mean? It means a transmission of some kind of knowledge. It means that it's a precept, okay, of something being transferred, or transmitted from generation to generation. Which, you know, so mostly it is talking about the Jewish traditionary law, ordinance or tradition. So, here, paradox is actually in the Bible, mostly is talking about something that is passed on. So, Jesus had a problem with the tradition that, that originates in man. But I do not think the apostolic tradition here mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 3 6 is that kind of tradition where it is uh, where it uh, where it has its origin in man 
and I don't think the apostles just came up with this tradition, but it originates from the Lord Jesus Christ Himself. So let us search now. Let us do this one thing. Let us search for the Greek word according to the Strong's number. We have this option in uh, East World. So let us do that instead. The kind of results that we'll get are more than what we get in the English. Uh, in this search so there are 13 verses found and uh, which actually this word paradosis of tradition occurs 13 times in the bible uh, in the new testament I mean. so uh, more now we encounter the same kind of verses again okay of how uh, in the gospels jesus is talking about the tradition of men and criticizing it so let's go on to these other the verses which talks about hmm, tradition in a positive way. So sometimes you see um, KJV is better than uh, other Protestant translations here. Mostly what they do is wherever it is tradition is actually mentioned negatively as something bad, they um, they will translate this word. Um, paradosis as tradition but when it comes to when it comes to apostolic tradition or tradition used in a the same word the same paradosis where it, where it is used in a positive sense they uh, translate it as teachings ordinances etc so you can see this uh, the, uh, most, uh, mostly in uh, translations like NIV, New International Version. Uh, in the, they totally do that, do it uh, so as to actually make it uh, make it conform to their own theology. That tradition is bad, and uh, you know, uh, and uh, you know, uh, it's, you know, tradition tradition is always bad. Okay, so. Next, uh, let us look at all these verses which speak of tradition in a positive sense. Now I praise you, brethren. So the first one is 1 Corinthians 11, 2. Let us remove the strongest number so that uh, it's easier to read. Okay. So now that it's back. Okay, now now I praise you, brother, that ye remember me in all things and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. <coughs> so it's the same word, same word paradosis as in he's talking about the traditions that he delivered them to uh, him. So but uh, here they for some reason they translated it as ordinances. So okay. So here again he was uh, uh, Galatians he's, he was talking about the tradition of my fathers as in uh, talking about the Jewish tradition again here okay uh, when he was talking about that and Colossians 2 8 beware lest any man okay, even here it's uh, spoken of in a very negative manner in the sense that it's the tradition of men again not the tradition that uh, the not apostolic tradition after the rudiments of the word and not of the Christ okay and then let's move on to the therefore brethren second Thessalonians 2 15 therefore brethren stand fast and hold the traditions which ye have been taught whether by word 
for our episode. So here, the, there is more here now. It's clear that, therefore, brethren, stand fast and hold to the traditions. So he's actually given the command, an apostolic command, saying that you hold to these traditions which ye have been taught. So he says that I have taught you, okay? Whether by word, okay? Now here is talking about whether by word or by our epistle. Epistle part, you know, because some of the, you know, most of the, uh, most of the letters that were written were preserved uh, in the church uh, and have come down unto us. So both of these are actually traditions, okay? Uh, it's interesting that how both the written and the spoken are described here as traditions. Because when you think of uh, the scriptures, uh, it's not just that uh, scripture is in some way, you know, uh, antagonistic or like um, a polar opposite of tradition or something like that. Most people actually like to think uh, uh, of it like that. But the thing is, what is actually scripture? That which was written down and passed down, okay? Because tradition paradosis means the transmission of something. We have a Bible in our hand. We have some scripture in our, uh, with us now because it has been passed down from generation to generation. It has been written and it has been preserved by scribes, by uh, faithful communities of Christians, okay? So that is how the Old Testament in the um, in the in Old Testament times was preserved, and that is how the New Testament was also preserved as a tradition being passed down from generation to generation. It's not that tradition. So now I want to just say that tradition is not something that you actually read and realize. Okay, after. 1900 years or so or 2000 years uh, later someone reads a bible comes up with an, uh, an interpretation that is not a tradition it, uh, here the apostolic tradition uh, the word itself means that it is passed on that is actually given uh, um, from generation to generation so here by word here the same word logos means something said okay let me see something said here something said it's a spoken word that he's talking about it's the same kind of word used in john one okay remember uh, remember john one um, John 1 1 in the beginning was the word, the word was with God. Okay, uh, it's, just a, uh, it's the same kind of a word that is used, the logos. So, here we have two, uh, two sides of uh, um, the traditions that were passed on by the uh, apostles. Okay, mostly uh, Paul, who is start talking. That you have supposed to hold fast to them. So just as uh, we are supposed to believe in the tradition that was passed on from generation to generation in writing, that this text has been preserved by this, uh, by the church. In the same way, the word of the logos, okay. Now. It has also been uh, has also been preserved through the generations and has come down to us. So there is something called an apostolic tradition which has been passed down from generation to generation and has come down to us. Okay, so our um, uh, our task is not to just read the Bible and just assume that uh, we have all the tradition, all everything, and all. But the thing is. To actually figure out what this uh, word and by uh, this tradition is that has been passed on by word, okay, that has come down unto us. So now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, 
that you withdraw yourself. So here is given a warning. Second Thessalonians 3 6 is given a warning to people that do not hold tradition. Now we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that ye withdraw yourself from every brother. So he's talking about believers here. He's not talking about the Jews or anyone like that, but he's talking about the believers. And he's saying, separate yourself from these people, these brothers that walk it disorderly, as in they do not have any kind of sense of uh, order in them. They walk disorderly. Because, why? And not after the tradition which he received of us. So he doesn't follow, he doesn't regard the tradition that he received from us. But he walketh disorderly. So, anybody who is actually saying that uh, they figured out the truth, these are the kind of people who say that they disregard the apostolic tradition and say that they have the truth, they have the right interpretation. Those kind of people you have to withdraw from. So if truth is not like something kind, uh, something like a personal opinion. So these people who walk disorderly and do not follow the tradition, but that we received of us. So there is something that has been received and and they command the church to actually preserve it. And there are two aspects to it, not just the written, but the spoken to. And as we have seen, it's the same word used. <coughs> it's the same word used in John chapter one when he's talking about the word of God, which was there from the beginning of the uh, from the beginning, even before creation. So, he's talking about the person of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, now, uh, here we see that there is something called epistolic tradition. But tradition in its, uh, um, in its original meaning, it means something which has been received, not just by epistle, but by the word also. So it is something that has been passed on from generation to generation. It cannot be something that you thought up of or like, you know, um, even if it is in 500 years ago, somebody actually figures out the truth by reading it. If it was not there from the beginning, it was not received, then we have to actually doubt it. That is, that is exactly what is uh, happening here. What, what we hear here, here is that saying that no, if anybody does not follow this tradition and all, withdraw from that person, as in do not have any communion with that person who thinks that they have the truth without the tradition, without the tradition of the apostles. So the next thing to do is to actually uh, figure out what is this tradition, where has it been preserved, and what uh, where can we actually find it? And it can, uh, so, uh, so I will just close with that, uh, and maybe later we can focus upon uh, these tradition and uh, the clues to it that uh, that are found in the Bible about mostly dealing with worship and like the way uh, um, you know uh, uh, the way it is actually supposed to be. So. Yeah, every brother, it says here that every brother that walketh disorderly. So, uh, what is the orderly way that is actually prescribed uh, in this tradition? What is that order that we are talking about? If we are talking about, if he was actually condemning disorder, it means that there is some kind of order. Right? So, what is that? We can uh, deal with that later. So. I wanted to just uh, share about this, like, you know, tradition is all, not always bad. And uh, there is something called the historic tradition, and uh, which has been commanded to be preserved. Okay, and it has two aspects to it, the epistle and the word, in the sense that they are written and they um, spoken. Thank you.